How would you describe motherhood? The hardest job you'll ever love. <laughs> There are a lot of women that God has called into both the workforce and into motherhood that are wondering, how can I be successful at both? So I wanted to interview some women who are and are wonderful examples of how to balance your family and your job and God's call for your life. And I feel like these people do just that. Terry Mewson is just the best. And if you are doing a segment on motherhood and advice and you have access to Terry Mewson, you're going to ask her to be a part of it <laughs> because there is so much wisdom that you can glean from her. And she, I mean, she's been Miss America. She's had this incredibly successful career all while raising seven children and founding her own ministry, Orphan's Promise, which has done incredible work to help children. So she just has so much wisdom and I wanted to tap into that. Here we go, Terry's out there. <laughs> Hi, Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Take your mask off. So it's <laughs> you too. You look wonderful. Thank you. And you after too. a baby. I know. Yes, it's been, <laughs> been, been fun. <laughs> That's great. Come sit down. All right, wonderful. Well, I have. I brought some. Uh, I figured you'd already had your coffee this morning, so I brought some juices you here did. for well, us to enjoy. Not to sound too much like my grandfather, but they're filled awesome. with all kinds of things oh, wow. to protect us from this plague. This looks like I could live forever <laughs> drinking this. <laughs> So you can pick. We have pick okay. whichever one you Come want. Come sit down. All Be comfy. Right. I'm going to pull this chair around so Great. I get to look at you. <laughs> How are you? Wonderful. Good. Good. Have you been surviving this year? Well, <laughs> yes. It was yesterday that was in question, but I passed it. <laughs> For a Christian woman in media, Terry Mewson is like your Oprah. She is just so gracious. She's so humble. She is just someone that you see on TV and you say, I want to be like Terry Mewson. And it's been so wonderful that to have women like that, you know, even at CBN, that I can look to as a mentor and just as an advisor for my own career and my own path. Thank you so much for making time. I am oh. so excited to talk to you. Oh, thank you. That's <laughs> just, so honoring. <laughs> yes, I look up to you so much. Oh, and you know, as you, you know, I just had a baby yes. of my own. My world has definitely changed. changed. You know, you can't prepare for it, can you? No. <laughs> I mean, you can have all the advice from your friends that you want, but until it actually happens to you, you don't realize how your world's yeah. going to be rocked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. rocked is the word. And, you know, a lot of my friends are having kids too. And, you know, we find ourselves very frequently asking each other, how yeah. do you raise children to love the Lord? And yeah. when do you start that process? Yeah. And what do you even, yes. what do you do? Yes. You know, you don't want to shove it down their throats, but yeah. you want Boy, it to. Boy, that's <laughs> so true. And you know, it kind of, it, it can morph into that sometimes out of our concern, you know, we, we, out of our sense of, um, of being challenged by the Lord to raise these children to honor him. I, I'm a firm believer. I mean, I, I did things that I know other mothers do. You know, if we couldn't make it to church, we did home church for a while. I taught in children's church at school so I could be with my kids at church. But generally speaking, honestly, I think I would have to say it's just making it a part of everyday life for yourself in such a real way that they, it's not, what is that saying? It's not taught as much as it's caught. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's the goal that they would see it in you and, um, and, and want that for themselves. You know, when we try to just hammer home yeah, exactly. <laughs> what we want them to know, it's, I, I find usually heels dig in. <laughs> And you know what? I would have done that too. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really have that kind of a relationship with the Lord when I was younger. I mean, I had a, um, a mom and dad who, who believed in God and who loved God in a kind of generic way. Um, that became stronger later in life after I made a commitment to Christ that changed for them. But I didn't have like a history of how that was going to work mm -hmm. growing up. So for my kids, I, I think, and, and let me say, let me say, because I know this is true for so many families, all my kids aren't where I'd like them to be with the Lord. Even now they're grown ups. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they're grown ups. And you know, some are walking closely 
Some are, some are not, and some are still testing the waters. And, you know, I really feel like our role as moms is to pray it through. You know, honestly, I've gotten to the place with the Lord where I've said, excuse me for this, but you know, a mother's heart, you know, I don't know about you. Once I had kids, I just started crying every yes, time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. yeah, that's why I keep Kleenex back here. But, <laughs> I just said, you know what, God, I don't even need to see to see it all happen. I'm just, I'm putting them on the altar. I'm trusting them to you. And I'm just asking you to be sure that they make it over the finish line because that's not my job. You know what, Abby, it took me a long time to figure out that isn't my job. My job is to love them. My job is to pray for them. My job is to give them wise counsel. But it's the job of the Holy Spirit. And if I become the Holy Spirit, then I make my children an idol. And I don't want my children to be yes. <laughs> an yeah. idol in my life. And so, you know, letting go. I mean, I find as I'm at this stage in my life, so much of life as you continue on through the years is about letting go. You know, it's about really just saying, okay, God, you know, you're, you're God, I'm not. And, you know, it's Wednesday, I'm going to have a cup of coffee and just going to take <laughs> Three deep breaths, you know, yeah. so, yeah. I love, that is so good. That's something my mom told me is that the Holy Spirit is the best parent. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, your granddad has often told the story of, I want to say it was Elizabeth, but I'm not sure, your Aunt Elizabeth, who wanted to, to go out or do something with some friends, and he didn't, he knew she shouldn't go, and he said, go up to your room and pray about it and ask the Lord what you should do. Oh. And she came down and said, can't go. Oh, I got that a lot from my parents. <laughs> they were all Always, yes, I always do what they do. The answer would be yes. <laughs> well, it's and you're also teaching them to go to the Lord themselves for mm -hmm. for a word from God that yeah. they'll hear. Yeah. One thing, as I've started working again, um, you know, it's being in media. It's yes. a very demanding job. It's not very. regular hours. It's not a nine to five that yep. you clock into. You're there's just all kinds of things going on all the time. So, you know, when I look at you, you have kids, you I have do. a very wonderful career. You've had many, you were Miss America. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've also, you've adopted children and you've still found time to even help thousands of children through Orphan's Promise. And how, how did you do it all? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would tell you this. Um, <clears throat> This is different for every mom, and I don't mean to make anyone feel any any guilt or look back and wish they'd done something differently because we all do what we what we feel is best for us to do at the time. Um, I did work full time in media in Wisconsin when my first two children were born. Um, you know, my first two are biological, my, my last five are adopted. And, and that is a different process in a way, although those adoptions took about the same amount of time as a pregnancy. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, you know, when my third child was coming, and JP was coming and, and it had been a, a dream of mine to adopt from Korea. And I felt what you're talking about, the pressure of, you know, racing home to nurse a baby and, you know, the baby's crying and you're frustrated and you want the baby to be at, at ease. And, you know, it's just a lot, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yes. a lot. But um, I had a wonderful friend who was uh, so good at childcare and I felt so confident of my children being with her. When JP was coming, Coming. She was leaving doing child care. And so it was, it was really almost impossible for me as a woman to feel comfortable with just finding a child care person. And so I thought to myself, why am I doing this And to myself? And my husband and I talked about it, and we just decided that I was going to leave which was so foreign to me. <laughs> and, you know, it never occurred to me. We talked about this before we were married. I said, well, I'm not going to leave my work. I mean, that's what I do, you know. The... But I left for six years because after JP, two years later, Tyler came. And I'm... I never missed one second of it. We had so much fun going down to the river and and catching tadpoles and raising frogs and, and going on nature hikes and doing things that I, I couldn't do before. When I spoke to her and I heard her talk about when she got that call from my grandfather and she laid out 
everything that she wanted in order to work at CBN while also giving her all to her family. I think, what if he had said no? And he said, so what do we have to do to get you here? And I said, <laughs> you know, you've had co-hosts before, but you've never had a mom as a co-host. So here's what I want. <laughs> I negotiated with Pat Robertson. <laughs> Imagine such a thing. I said, I want to go leave work at 2.30, pick my kids up at school, and I don't want to come back. I want to be able to go on field trips. I want to be a room mom if I need to. And if one of my children is sick, I want to have a little couch that I can have them come in and be with me, and I want to leave right afterwards and go home. And he said, okay, you got it. And I, um, I could see that God's plan, even though I couldn't understand why at the time, was so right for us to come. Um, and of course, he knew about later adopting our girls from Ukraine. He, he, OP was his vision. And and not mine, really. I mean, I, I was very pro-adoption, but I had no dream of starting that. So, yes. you know, obedience pays off. <laughs> yes. and I just say it does bring with it. Obedience brings with it blessing. And so I think, you know, some people find that happy way of being able to work and have their kids with someone that's very trustworthy to them. And some people go home. Some, I mean, I just think everybody, we need to not lay things on each other that make us feel more anxiety, more pressure, more, you know, juggling many things. That's kind of life now. I mean, I don't know about you, but I just feel like it's all very fast moving and, and challenging. Yes. Challenging. And especially for what I'm raising a child in right now, you know, yeah. I see social media all day long where I see what other mothers are doing and I'm like, Oh no, I don't yes. have that for Annalisa. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. And it's just, it, it's, yeah, very... it's challenging. It's, it's really finding in a way, this is a good challenge though, isn't it? Because it's really finding what is your norm with what God is speaking to you with your child, with your spouse, with your life. And that is different for every one of us. And it's okay for it to be different. You know, God doesn't call us all to step in line, looking the same and marching the same. And, but he does call us to seek him and to seek through things or think through things. And, you know, really it's a, it's a deal of, of, I think, learning to prioritize in your own heart, you know, where you put things, but it's, but that prioritization looks different for every person. Yeah. So freedom, you know, there's freedom in the Lord came yeah. to set us free. I want to be free. <laughs> <laughs> and I know every parent probably feels like they're raising their children in the craziest time yeah. ever. And you know what? Uh, <laughs> every woman feels like somebody else is doing it better than they are. Yes. Seriously. You know, <laughs> we need to, to just be kinder to ourselves. <laughs> yes. But what advice just with everything, you know, a lot of stuff, even we're covering that's happening in the school system oh or my. the different, you know, what we're seeing put into children's shows. How do you navigate figuring yeah. out what, what to allow your kids to do, but also allowing them to make their own decisions? Well, this is an interesting question because my husband and I are parenting again. We're raising our granddaughter who's eight now, and she's been with us for, gosh, I guess it's been about six years. So I'm faced with all those questions. And, you know, the world is different in many ways than it was when my children were younger. Mm -hmm. But in some ways, you know, it's the same old problems. <laughs> Just they have a different face. They look a little different, but, you know, same challenges. You know, I try to be really careful with her about what we let her watch on TV. Um, you know, limiting screen time, but you know, I'm learning to limit screen time for myself. <laughs> yeah, we all. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're all on that journey. Um, and just talking with her about it. You know, I can remember sometimes with my mom and dad, they're laying down the law or being very firm about something. And it built kind of a resentment mm -hmm. in me when I was a young child. And I remember thinking, I'm never going to do that when I grow up and have my kids. <laughs> um, yeah. But I find when I talk with her, when I explain the why behind it, I know I don't have to do that. I mean, it's not like my child dominates, you know, what, how <laughs> I react, but I feel like I owe it to her. I want her to think 
about what she's doing. Um, I, I just, she went on, it's spring break, and she went on an overnight with a friend last night, a couple of friends. And, you know, overnights are just a little scary. I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. say, I don't care how old they are. And I just said to her in the car, you know all the rules about being, you know, polite and, and picking up and all that kind of thing. But here's the other thing I want to say about your night tonight. If anything's going on, you need to say, if Jesus was standing in this room with me right now, now, would I be doing this? <laughs> That's great advice. <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to lay this back at her. <laughs> and, you know, she, I think one of the things that's good about talking to your children is it gives them the freedom to come back and talk to you because yes. they know you want to listen. You know, I want to hear what they have to say. And so that's true with all my grandchildren. I have five and a sixth one on the way. I'm so excited. I cannot do business with your grandfather. I mean, his numbers oh. are off the charts. <laughs> I think he's like 17 like, at this yeah, point. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, along those lines, I'm definitely going to put that in my think tank of, you know, talking to your kids. Lay it back. Yeah. <laughs> but, but just are there other things when you think back of things you've done as a mother that you think you did honestly, really well and would recommend other mothers incorporate. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a big one for um, family trips when you can do them because it kind of takes your child away from all the other stuff that's knocking at his or her door and, and bonds you together. Um, I realize not everybody can do that, but you know what everybody does do? They eat. Yes. Now, I'm, I want to tell you, I'm more lax with this with my granddaughter than I was with my own children. But I, we had a rule at our table that, um, that you could not make fun of anyone. You could not say negative things about anyone. And if someone was talking, you had to wait till they were done until you spoke. Oh, um, that's good. Sometimes that worked. And, <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, all of these things sound good on paper, but you, it's not easy. I mean, no. it's, you have to work at it, you know? <laughs> and so... Um, you know, eating dinner together, I think, was a, a pretty consistent thing that we did. So I see that as a place um, for good, safe conversation. The, the saying that love covers a multitude of sins, I feel like the best advice I could give some young mom coming into her role would be give yourself grace. You know, give yourself the freedom to make mistakes and to learn as you go. Uh, you know, God is like that with us, and and we're to we're to reflect who He is. I think with our kids, sometimes if we try to be too perfect and make them too perfect, we create this very performance-oriented child that feels a lot of pressure and anxiety. How can we have the joy of the Lord if we're under that kind of weightiness? So I would say, remember that love covers the multitude of sins, and take three deep breaths. You're going to make it.